Dr. Debbie here, and just a quick announcement before we get to today's episode. Has someone shattered your trust? Have you been blindsided by betrayal? It's a total shock to the body and mind. Some of us recover, and many others stay sick, bitter, angry, resentful, and stuck. If that's you, I have a research-based solution. My new book, Trust Again, Overcoming Betrayal and Regaining Health, Confidence and Happiness is now available. In the book, I literally walk you through the five stages of betrayal all the way to transformation with all kinds of examples, stories, and activities so you heal as you're moving through the book. I've also shared my very personal story along with those who participated in my PhD study so you can see how others move through their experiences too. Of course, I'm also teaching you my four-part trust rebuilding process so you can learn to feel safe again, love again, trust again. So here's what you do. Go to the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, thepbtinstitute.com forward slash trust again. That's thepbtinstitute.com forward slash trust again. Why? Because there's a link on that page that'll take you to Amazon, but I want you to know about it because once you get the book, come back to that page, enter your receipt, and then you get some amazing bonus gifts. Can't wait to share the book with you. And if you have friends or a group who'd benefit, get it for them too, because I'm giving tickets to a very special workshop for anyone who purchases more than five copies. The PBTinstitute.com forward slash trust again. Okay, now on to today's episode. Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Kathy Hammond. And Kathy is a 27-year veteran stepmom, a writer, speaker, and award-winning author. In her second book, How to Kill Your Husband's Ex-Attorneys and Then Some, <laughs> Ask Kick and Advice for Stepmoms, Kathy delivers a uniquely off-center perspective and advice for stepmoms to keep their sanity and money intact in challenging stepfamily arrangements. Kathy has an MA in Organizational Management and speaks and writes on motivation, goal setting, and goal attainment. She is CEO of a recruitment solutions firm in Southern California, where she lives with her husband, John. Kathy is stepmom to two now grown sons. So if you're an ex, you have an ex, if you're a stepmom or stepdad, you're going to love this episode. My guest, Kathy and I are talking all about how to navigate that often tricky road of step parenting what's okay to say and do, who does the disciplining, and so much more. Here's Kathy. Okay, everybody, we have Kathy Hammond with us today. And this is, we're taking this into a bit of a different direction because today we're talking about the role of stepmom. And so many of you, you've, you've, struggled with a betrayal and maybe you're in a new relationship or maybe you're just in that stepmom role but we have the expert of all experts on stepmoms joining us so welcome kathy well thanks for having me debbie i really appreciate an opportunity to to talk with you today sure well and i'm so glad you're with us so let's just talk about being in that stepmom role what's involved in that what let's just let's just dive in and start right there oh <sighs> You know, it's it, it's a dysfunctional arrangement to begin with, if you think <laughs> about it. I mean, you know, because you have your nuclear family and then mm-hmm. they are doing what they're doing. And then a stepmom comes into the, the mix and they change things up. Um, it, so it's challenging for everyone involved, um, including the, the kids. I mean, you and your husband, you may just think that, you know, everything is just going great, but everyone else is spinning around you uh, Mm -hmm. and uh, they're not sure really what's going to happen to their lives uh, with the presence of this new person, um, Mm -hmm. the stepmom. And the stepmom doesn't know, you know, it's like, it's not like having your own kids where they you know, they, they unconditionally accept you because you're the mom, but here are some people that you're doing mothering you know, activities that, you know, may not appreciate your existence. Um, kids see you as maybe the, the wedge, you know, that create, you know, between the parents or that you're preventing them from getting back together again, the, the fantasy of the, of the children. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's not just you and your husband as much as you would like it to be. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, 
it's confusing. Um, it, it can be rewarding because, you know, like they say, well, bonus mom, you know, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm, I'm not big on, on these terms like that, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's a, 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 a lot to consider um, in set motherhood. Right. And, and I guess that's it. You know, someone falls in love with someone else and, and because they're good, they just assume that everything is good with with the kids. And there's it seems like there's there's really no rule book here on how to how to make it work. But there are so many different sets of challenges. Let's let's talk about the kids, mm -hmm. because what's that what's that line that you walk between? I want these kids to feel so loved and so comfortable and I'm, but I'm not trying to replace their mom. How, how do you balance that? How do you ne negotiate that? You don't pretend that you're their parent. Um, you, you don't even assume that that you are. I, I see a lot of that. You know, they think, well, I'm the, you know, I'm the stepmom. I'm the stepdad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that that you know, in a three dollars will get you coffee at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it's but it really. I think if you if you approach it at I'm going to be support to my spouse, and I'm going to have fun with these kids. I'm not going to I'm not going to step in. They have parents. They don't need someone else to tell them what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but you can be support, be their friend, and you know, and and that's how I approach it with my stepsons. They're kids. We had fun. Mm -hmm. We had fun all the time whenever they were around. And, you know, and that was always just really, it, it made it easy in the house. You know, and I always hear about the challenge with disciplining them and, and, and what, what's appropriate to do and what's not appropriate to do. What, if you see them doing something, what's appropriate to say and what's not. Walk us through that a little bit. You know, I always thought I'll keep them safe if they're there with me. Mm -hmm. If there was an issue where there's some real behavior problem or something that needed to be addressed further, I would tell mm -hmm. my husband, let him deal with it. Mm -hmm. I always came out of it, you know, really the good guy, because I never was issuing discipline. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a mother. Tell the mother if you want. I mean, they have parents. So, you know, I, so I, I never disciplined the kids. I, I, I would stop them if they were going to get injured. But mm -hmm. other than that... No, I just le left it to the parents. Mm -hmm. And and I always hear also about how someone uh, is frustrated because they don't raise their children like that, and they're watching something. Now here they are; they're the they're the stepmom, they're the stepdad, and they're they're watching something that they wouldn't do, but they don't feel they have the right to step in and say something. Yes. I mean, I think, well, I think a lot of step parents do say something and they may say something to their spouse. Just don't say it to the kids. You can express your opinion. You can give support. You know, I see too that you'll, you'll have parents that out of guilt because of the divorce, that they're letting kids get away with murder, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and when my husband and I first got married and right before all of my, because I moved from California to Nashville when we got married. And I, when, before my furniture arrived, mm -hmm. and I was in the house, you know, with my husband's stuff, and the kids were tearing it up. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen with my stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when, uh, when, you know, the furniture came, and I told my husband, that's not going to happen with this furniture. Mm -hmm. So he, then he laid down the law with them and told them, you're not, yeah, you're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, we made a play area for them and, you know, took them outside a lot and, you know, did all of that. But, um, but uh, you know, again, you really, it's, you've got to respect the parents, the mm -hmm. parents' right to, do, to raise their children the way that they want to, which is why as a stepmom, it's like pay close attention to that in the beginning. Because if you're saying where this is a consistent pattern, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to change just because you've got a piece of paper or because right. you moved in. So it's, right. you know, you can, you can reduce your frustrations by paying attention to what is going on before you commit yourself for life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears a little bit. And so often, let's say the ex has a hard time accepting the new stepmom, the new stepdad. Let's talk about that. What are some different scenarios you've seen and, and how, do we, how do we work with that? Well, your life can be hell if that's the case. 
uh, sadly. Um, it, it, you know, it does, it takes people time to get used to the situation. There's, there's also, I think, a lot of stuff going on there that, that may be causing that. Mm-hmm. You have the insecurity. So if you have, you have a mom and the, her children are now with this other woman. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at, okay, is she going to be a better mom? You know, is she, you know, a better wife? Are they, you know, doing all, are they having a better life than, than what I'm having? Um, and the stepmom is also looking at the ex and saying, you know, she has real insight into my spouse that really no one should have except his wife and I'm his wife. Mm-hmm. So there's that there, you know, on, on that. So it, this is going to create a dynamic that it just sets you up for some for tension or a battle on, on this. Um, I think too, in, in some cases, when, when people get a divorce, money becomes such a huge issue mm-hmm. on this because now you've got two separate households with the same two incomes actually supporting two households instead of just one. Mm-hmm. There's going to be problems with that. And then when you marry into this, you know, into you're, you're getting married, you are bringing your income into it. Maybe the ex, she doesn't have an extra income at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. There's going to be frustration over that. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it's, yeah, it, the, the, the situation just lends itself to being rife for a, for a battle between mm-hmm. the, the, the new stepmom and the, and the ex-wife. Right. So what does somebody do? What are some ways they can sort of mitigate it, make it a little bit easier? Empathy. Practice mm-hmm. empathy. Stepmoms mm-hmm. have to do that. They, they have to look at the situation and not try, try to like one up the, the ex. That, that's mm-hmm. first and foremost. Even though that's your natural inclination because you're saying, now this is mine. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You need to, to empathize. One of the things that I also recommend too is for stepmoms to encourage their, their spouses to sit down with the ex mm-hmm. once a year mm-hmm. at least and talk mm-hmm. about what are the children's needs mm-hmm. financially. Mm-hmm. Um, take some of that, that pressure off of the situation mm-hmm. that doesn't cause people to have to go back into court to get mm-hmm. more money. It's also uh, cost savings for the, mm-hmm. for the stepmom and her husband because mm-hmm. they're not getting lawyers involved. You know, they're not going to have like a long-term increase in, in the support. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, but just look at it through the mm-hmm. eyes of the ex you know, one, one day um, we were actually picking up the kids. We were transiting through an airport uh, in the city where the kids lived with their mom and, uh, and her, her new husband. And she brought them to the airport to, to tr- continue on with us. We were going to take them back to, to, we were living in Florida at the time, to take them back with us. And I was standing at the end of one of those people movers, you know. Mm-hmm, you, you mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so my youngest stepson, he sees me. And he was probably about... I don't know, seven or eight years old. And he sees me at the long, the long end of that. And he takes off running toward me and jumps into my arms, you know, when, when he sees me mm-hmm. and all I saw was that look on his mother's face. Oh. And I, and I mean, I really felt for her cause I thought uh, that, that would really crush me. So mm-hmm. I told him, I want you to go back and I want you to give her a big hug you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. tell her how much you're going to miss her. And so it, it's, it's like, just, you know, be, be a nice person. You're like the golden rule, do unto others. Um, that would be the, the best advice. Right. And, you know, because you could really see from so many different perspectives, the, the kid from the kids and the, and the, and the ex, let's talk about the, 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 partner's role so now here there's the stepmom and now there's the the husband right Mm -hmm. and how what's the best way of of navigating that relationship where he's let's say honoring you as the new wife and still respecting the the ex or whatever walk us Mm -hmm. through that a little bit because he's in a tricky spot too yeah. Yes, he, he is. And, and generally, you know, that, that, well, I, and I'm gonna, I can't speak for, for everyone, but you bring into it, I mean, from a divorce, you, you're going to bring a lot of baggage, a lot of, you know, uh, you know, unresolved emotions 
from from the divorce from that relationship there could have been betrayal in in the in the process that still you know even though you know he's gone on and remarried it still might still smart a bit that you know maybe the the ex was you know doing something and, and they weren't shouldn't have been doing right and i want to qualify that because the listeners of of from betrayal to breakthrough mm-hmm. certainly it's it's a betrayal and so often it is that partner who uh, whether it was I mean we have men and women who listen to the show so yeah. so the partner did betray and now they are off in this new relationship and there's such a tremendous amount of pain and hurt uh, you know and especially mm-hmm. to see their you know their their ex so happy with this new person and i get it it's you know it's like they uh, on some level want them happy but on the other level they've been deeply deeply hurt and betrayed so is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals like the stress of broken trust or a recent betrayal better help h e l p will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist you could start communicating in under 48 hours it's not a crisis line it's not self help it's professional counseling done securely online there's a broad range of expertise available which may not be locally available in many areas the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily, like this one. Joy is very attentive and understanding. She has very good suggestions and useful tools that help me. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash Debbie. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash Debbie. Debbie, D-E-B-I, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for From Betrayal to Breakthrough listeners, you get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com forward slash Debbie. Is there... Let's say, coming from a betrayed experience, because that's what my listeners are listening to, is there something you'd recommend that partner do or say or whatever, just to make that whole aspect of it a little bit easier? You know, and and that also goes back to having empathy, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and just respecting it. Keep the keep the communications limited Mm -hmm. for the stepmom. And especially if you were involved in any kind of the betrayal (laughs) process, Mm -hmm. keep out of view. You just don't want to throw gas onto a fire, uh, you know, because they have some, they have some ability to really mess you up via the kids. Now it's going to, you know, could really wreck the kids as well in the process. But if you don't look for opportunities or like, you know, rub somebody's face in it, you know, by you being there, uh, from the stepmom's perspective, and just let him deal with his stuff and just deal directly, you know, one on one with the ex. And, you know, y- because your involvement there is really not necessary. You know, right. we, we want, we want to, sh- you know, some maybe show him like, yeah, I'll look at, you know, look at what I have going here. And, and especially if, if the, <clears throat> the ex is doing, you know, maybe not not behaving nicely. So it's mm-hmm. kind of do a tit for tat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just like do whatever you can in your power to just avoid it all together. And just, mm-hmm. j- just, just empathize with this person. Because at some point, I mean, it's like, you can't wage a one sided battle. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. at least not for very long. Absolutely. And, and the worst thing I see is, is really how it, it, affects the kids and how it's it almost becomes the 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 kids burdens you know they hear one thing when they're with their mom and then they they it's almost like they're sort of being trained to dislike the ex so what's what's some advice you can give right there 
For which side? <laughs> for both, both. I want to know just for, yeah, from the the ex who's struggling, how do they not say something uh, just that's really going to kind of taint the, the, the however this, the children yeah. could look at the at the stepmom and then what the stepmom can do? What, what are just some some the hints or advice mm-hmm. or tips because it's such a sensitive such a sensitive topic it, it it is and sometimes we let our anger and and frustration get in the way of seeing things logically um the damage that is done to to kids and and the statistics are out there about you know the, the children with you know early drug and alcohol uh, abuse um, you know, promiscuity. I mean, just so many things that can, you know, that really are going to damage a, a child's life um, mm-hmm. because they have no voice in this. They love both their parents equally. Uh, they may even like or love their step parent. So they're constantly caught in this tug of war that, mm-hmm. d- that just can level their life. And, and I've seen that mm-hmm. firsthand what that kind of strife can do to a child. Um, and so if, if, we, if everybody just, like, you know, that, that old adage, they say, you know, love your children more than you hate your ex-spouse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you can, can do that. Um, you know, this is really a cause. If you really can't control that, it's like, get, get into some therapy. Talk to someone. You know, really work that out and understand that if a, your child loves a step parent or has a good relationship with the step parent or the, and especially their other parent, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean they love you less. Mm-hmm. We sometimes lose sight of that, you know, when we're, again, we're, we're waging a battle. We're going to get even. And, you know, we want to have the upper hand here um, for whatever myriad of reasons. But in, in the end, the, the only people really paying the price are the kids. And I can see them feeling so guilty if they like the stepmom. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they do. Yes, absolutely. So they end up not, not wanting to talk about what goes on at their mom's house or what goes on at their dad's house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, I mean, I saw that with my own stepkids, that they were really guarded about the information sharing you know, and, mm-hmm. and that shouldn't have been like that. You know, mm-hmm. they should be able to be free to say, oh, yeah, you know, mom took us over here and we did this and this was a great time. And, um, you know, instead of, you know, dad over there going, okay, yeah, and that cost me an extra $500, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> so, right. you know, this is, it, it's, it's like grow up. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I mean, the adults who are supposed to be protecting these kids are behaving like kids. The kids right. are the ones trying to regulate their emotions where, yeah. where the parents are just out of control. So. Now, let's, let's talk about what are the kids, what's, what do you recommend the kids call the stepmoms? Their name. Their name. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, I would imagine on some, maybe they're more comfortable and they want to to you come up with a name or something, but mom would really be kind of crossing that really hurt line right there. Again, the, the empathy factor. I mean, she's mom. You aren't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's dad. You're not dad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I know my, um, my stepson's um, first stepfather, he insisted upon being called dad. Mm-hmm. And this disturbed the kids were little and this Mm -hmm. really disturbed them they essentially ratted him out not so much to their dad but to me wow and you know and i said call him by his name you're not required to call him dad well but they say you know that he says i i have to i said no you don't Mm -hmm. and if he has a problem have him call us and I imagine on some level, he was probably thinking, oh, that's, they'll feel more comfortable that way. But that's, no, that's he told me, he told all. me why. Yeah. He, he said, you know, I don't believe children should call their parents by their first name. I said, you're not their parent. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm a stepdad. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. You know, it, it's your, your, your wife's husband. Right. Look right. at it that way. Let's talk about the extended family now, because now here you yes. are, you're in this new marriage. How, how, do you, how do you negotiate that? Now you're in with all these new people and they're used to the other spouse, the ex, and, and now you're the new one. Yeah, you know, and they have a relationship with that person. They don't have that with you generally. 
This is the mother of their grandchildren, their niece, their nephews. Um, they, um, it's may have been cordial. Uh, they, they don't, they don't see that, you know, the, the problems between the couple, they think, well, should not really affect me. They're, they're not taking sides. Mm -hmm. And your husband wants, or the, 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 the mom, they want you to take sides. <laughs> Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And, you know, to show them again, especially if there's been some sort of a betrayal, um, in which case maybe parents and siblings are, are right, you know, to, to be a little bit miffed. But um, it's, you know, it takes time to develop any relationship. And, you know, I mean, of course, there, there are some family members that like to cause drama and, you know, they like stirring things up all the time between, mm -hmm. you know what, th those people avoid them. Just, you know, be cordial when you see them, be civil, but you don't have to be their best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you have your own family, your own friends. I mean, really, if a family is very difficult, the extended family is difficult, mm -hmm. stay away from them. Mm -hmm. you know, and then there's the yourself. other... Right. There's the other piece, and I've heard this so many times too, where the the stepmom now is just, I guess, let's say the stepmom is, uh, or the ex is sp still spending a lot of time with their ex, and the stepmom is is feeling really uncomfortable, really insecure. It's still the mom of the kids, though. So how do you how do you work through that? Um, we didn't have that that issue because she's not married to my husband. I am. So there's no need for her to be spending one-on-one -on -one time with mm -hmm. him at all for, okay. you know, unless, unless they're in court. <laughs> no, I mean like, let's say when yeah. the kids are younger and there's like, you know, school things and stuff oh. like that. Well, yeah, but you, you go to that. You don't, you're not there with that person. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, if you can be friends, you know, and maybe that the marriage dissolved because you just grew apart. It doesn't mean that you hate each other or, right. or any of that, but mm -hmm. you know, in which case, yeah, I mean, you can be, you can be friendly, um, you know, but you, would also go to these events, you know, with, with your husband. Um, that's part, of, that's his life, you know, his children. And, um, you know, I used to go to the sporting events, but, you know, with the kids and mm -hmm. do all of that, uh, you know, and she would, she would be there. The ex would be there. Uh, but it was, you know, I mean, we, we weren't sitting with her mm -hmm. here again. It's like, be, be cordial. Yeah, be, be, that's really be what it friendly. comes down to. Well, you know, even in, in um, this last July, we all went out to uh, to Nashville for my youngest son's uh, step, uh, my youngest stepson's birthday that his mm -hmm. mother was hosting a, an event there for him. Mm -hmm. And so, and everybody was there. Everything was, was all very nice. And, you know, we had a wonderful dinner, beautiful venue, and, and then we all left. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some examples of an ex's deceit? let's say, that can impact a stepmom? Um, sometimes they may infer that something is going on with them and your husband. That could be mm -hmm. something that, you know, could be patently false. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, you're, you're not seeing them 24-7, your spouse, so, you know, who knows? Right. Um, you know, they, in terms of, you know, um, I see of the the deceit. I think the thing that really impacts is, especially when there's like a legal issue. Um, it, I don't think that people realize that that actually is feeding into what the lawyers want because mm -hmm. now you, if if there's a lie being told, you're going to have to try to defend it or disprove what they're, what they're saying. First of all, you shouldn't do that. If somebody lies in in court, it's not your burden to prove that it's false. It's their right. burden to prove that it's true. So you mm -hmm. can just let that go. But that, but if you engage in that back and forth, that, that's going to impact you. It's, it's going to rob you of your life savings, perhaps. Um, and it's when, exhausting, I imagine. And yes, yes. Right, and, and just uh, very stressful. What's your best advice for stepmoms, you know, who are, who are in, who, who just, who find themselves in a really uh, tough relationship with their husband's ex? Extract yourself from the situation. There, there's no reason for your involvement at all. 
it, it's you be pleasant. You're in your home when the kids are there. Be fun, you know, be, you know, just have just like regular, you know, fam, family life. Leave the discipline to the, the parents um, for, you know, their education. If you, if you want to be able to help them, if you're able to help them, great. If they're having trouble in school, they have two parents. Let them deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, you need just, it's just stay out of it. That is actually, I mean, that's, yeah, you can feel bad for your for your spouse, but if he's got a really difficult ex, you have to look at this and say, you know, he picked her, he chose mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. so he's going to have to deal with the aftermath uh, of this, um, and we we can't rescue them. And I think that any time we get involved, we actually make things worse. So that's that's, that's back. An important insight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want to make sure everyone knows before we wrap up? You know, it, it, I, I've often wondered if, you know, like if, if I knew what I know now about this, would I have made the, the same decision? Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just such a hypothetical. That, I mean, I, I don't know if that would be the case. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm you know, crazy about my husband, so I probably would have. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what I would have done is, is stayed out of it more mm -hmm. and not try to, you know, like to be the alpha woman in the, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that created a, you know, probably created a lot more uh, tension than was necessary. Mm. Well, what's so great is you learned it and you're, and you're passing it forward, you know, so that's, that's a, that's a good thing. So how do we learn more about you? Where do we go? Um, Kathy with a K Hammond books with an S dot com. And, uh, you can, you know, read more about my book, how to kill your husband's ex attorneys. <laughs> and then some ass kicking advice for stepmoms. I think that pretty much sums it up there. <laughs> all right, Kathy, so much. So thank you so much. You helped all kinds of stepmoms, all kinds of all exes. Of, and it's really going to be, um, I think, what people need to hear when they're in that role so they can, they can just move through it easily and uh, where it doesn't really hurt the kids. So that's, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate it. It seems like the theme running through all of this is empathy. The more empathy we have, the kinder we can be for all involved, because let's face it, the ones who often struggle the most are the kids. So if you need a little extra motivation to be more empathetic, do it for them. Stay in touch with Kathy by going to kathyhammondbooks.com and we'll have all of her information in the show notes at pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. There are so many emotions that need to be dealt with when it comes comes to step parenting, insecurity, guilt, frustration at seeing that the step kids are doing things or saying things that you may not have taught your own kids, pain at seeing the kids being okay with the step parent, yet knowing that their happiness is what's most important. There's so much to unpack there. I guess the bottom line is do your best think of the kids and bring your highest self to each of these opportunities that can go really well or really not based on how well we want to do, how well we want to be, and who we want to become. If you haven't already, be sure to take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz at pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. And one more thing, doors are open to the PBT membership community. Imagine everything you'd ever need to become your physical, mental, and emotional best. Community, support, certified coaches and practitioners you could schedule time with, daily classes on all kinds of interesting topics, curated experts teaching advanced strategies in the areas of health, mindset, spirituality, personal development. Imagine the most friendly, welcoming, and supportive place to become your best all online. I'm so excited to welcome you to go. So go to thepbtinstitute.com forward slash join to learn more. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.